The purpose of this video is to introduce basic definitions and derive basic differential equations for deforming beams under bending. Let us begin by considering first the undeformed beam. As usual, the x-axis is along the beam, the y-axis point downward, and now it is useful to compare it with the deformed configuration of the beam, where the deformed line y equal to v of x is shown here, and we call this line the deflection line, and we refer to v of x or vertical downward displacements as deflections. In addition to deflections, we would like to identify the slope. And the slope could be defined by looking at the tangent angle theta. And so the slope by definition is tangent theta. And of course, the slope could be also expressed as the derivative of v with respect to x. We can also solve for theta using arctangent or tangent minus one or a tan. Different books use different definitions, but they're all the same. For our purposes, it is also important to introduce the radius of curvature. So let me show the deflection line. And now, instead of fitting a straight line, which is a tangent, I would like to fit a circle. So the circle uh, approximates the curve better than the straight line because it has a curvature. And the radius of this circle is denoted by rho. And using differential geometry, one can show that rho could be given by this expression. It's a bit complicated and somewhat tedious to derive, but that's what it is. I want to pay your attention that there is absolute value of V double prime. And the reason, of course, we need to have absolute value is because the radius is a non-negative value. So it's important for us to deal with this absolute value because Clearly, uh, the circle could be on uh, a different side, right? We have to differentiate between uh, different circles, right? Uh, maybe more importantly, we have positive bending and negative bending, and we need to sort out what the difference are. So to this end, I would like to introduce the sine curve. The sine curvature simply says that I will use either plus or minus in front of 1 over rho. And so we have here plus and minus. By itself, it does not do anything. Really, it's a definition of a new entity. But this entity now is very easy to connect to the sine convention for the bending moments. So this end, let me look at the picture of the positive bending. You can see here the fitting circle is on the top. Now, if I look at the picture of the negative bending, you could see that here the fitting circle is at the bottom, and that's what sine curvature is all about. It just differentiates between these two circles. They may have uh, the same radius, but 
they clearly represent positive bending and negative bending. So if I now want to choose the positive and negative curvatures, right? All I have to do is to say that for this case, I use the minus sign. For this case, I use the plus sign. And uh, obviously, this is kind of the will be the main case for which I want to derive the equation. And then the sign of M will really fix everything. Okay. Now, to proceed further, let me briefly recall what did we do to derive the stress. We use geometry. Here's my curvature. That's the strain in the beam fibers. Then we use Hooke's law. And then we use the equilibrium equations uh, to establish that uh, the resultant moment of the stress sigma is nothing but the internal moment. And when we put it all together, we obtain this relationship. If I combine this relationship with this one and this one, I will obtain the expression for sigma, sigma equal to my over iz. Okay, so this was a stepping stone for deriving the expression for sigma. At this stage, I want to work with this expression because it will lead me directly to the differential equation for the deflection line. Indeed, if I take the expression from the previous slide and the expression for the sine curvature, I can put it together to obtain a very important relationship. If I look on the right-hand side, I have here the bending moment. That's where my bending moment diagram comes, all right? On the left-hand side, I have the deflection line, the derivative of the deflection line, but everything that uh, I have here comes from the function V. So this is a very important equation and it is due to Euler and it's called Euler elastic equation. However, this equation is pretty complicated. Why? Because we have here a complicated denominator. So to address this, I would like to take this equation and I would like to introduce the simplifying assumption saying that the deflection of uh, the beam are much smaller than the beam size. And this also means that the slopes of the beam are much smaller than one. Now, since V prime is much smaller than one, this term becomes negligible compared to one and the entire denominator disappears. And as a result, I get a much simpler equation. And this is our basic differential equation that we will use to compute uh, the deflection line. However, it's also important to recognize that we don't have boundary conditions. And the reason we need boundary conditions is because upon integration, we will obtain integration constants and boundary conditions are critical in order to calculate those constants. 